Hey everyone, this is day six and episode three of my crazy experiment of writing a book about visual PKM in six weeks. My plan is still to present my book and my learnings at the PKM Summit in Utrecht, the Netherlands, or my failure and my learnings. And you remember last time I was at the top of the cliff, I believe I managed to climb down from the cliff and now I'm standing in front of this huge mountain, the top of which is my book. So I've been super busy. You can see this here. These are the three episodes. So this was my initial episode announcing that I'm doing the book. This was my previous episode right here. Episode two, where I talked about some of the learnings I did in terms of reviewing videos on YouTube and putting together my process. And then you can see here, I've been busy with a couple of things. So that's what we're going to dive into today. In the video description, there's a survey link. Please, after watching this video, go to that survey. There are a couple of questions I'd like to ask you and seek your feedback. So please don't forget, I'll come back to this at the end of the video as well. But for now, just wanted to make sure that I mentioned this. Now, if we look at what I did in the last couple of days, first of all, this has been a very busy few days, not busy working on my book project, but busy at the office, busy with other stuff. So. I really had only a couple of hours every day to work on this. So it's been, in this sense, a stressful experience. In the techno visual PKM community, as I mentioned in episode one, I'm holding regular meetings with the community to discuss about my progress, about my learnings and some of the behind the scenes stuff. And one of the things that the team mentioned was to check out Larry McEnery from Chicago University. He has a course on writing. And so what I did was the following. I downloaded the video. I watched these two videos from Larry. They are really very good and insightful videos into the process of writing. I downloaded the transcript of this video. I uploaded it to ChatGPT. And I asked ChatGPT to do an interview with me. So you can see here, I have my text, the downloaded transcript, and I'm asking ChatGPT to impersonate Larry and grill me about my book, help me clarify my pitch, my target audience, the entire book. So this was a discussion that I went through. It's a fairly long discussion. At the end of this conversation, I asked ChatGPT to generate a couple of versions of an outline for or titles for the book, an outline for the book, and also some other summaries and materials. So I used this discussion. This really helped me this in this interview style discussion with ChatGPT to crystallize my message and what I wanted to convey in the book. So one of the things I did was to clarify the three different groups of people. I believe that this book is going to be valuable too. So I'm thinking of what I call PKM nerds. These are the people who have they established PKM systems, but they use it primarily for writing. So these are the people who are black belt PKMers, but focused on writing. And I think you are missing out on something. You're missing out on another dimension of thinking. Then I have the second group of people are the visual creators. These are sketch noters, people who take note on paper. Maybe they create photos of their sketch notes and post it on Instagram or store it in Notion or something like that. And my message to you is that there's a huge opportunity if you 
connect ideas through visuals. It's great to have sketchnote summaries, but what I'm talking about is not sketchnoting per se, it's linking ideas by reusing illustrations. And then my third group of people who I think are going to read this book are the would-be visual thinkers. These people believe that they cannot draw. And the good news is I can't draw either. I'm completely bad at it. I've practiced, I tried to teach myself, I went to courses, nothing helps. I'm completely useless at drawing. But visual thinking is not about drawing. You can use ready-made icons, you can use AI art, you can use visual models like, for example, such a map of ideas. You don't need to be an artist to be a visual thinker. So I think my message to you is you can still be a visual thinker. So this was one of the things I worked on to crystallize in my mind who my target audience is and what transformation I want to help these people go through. Then the other question I was contemplating was why now and why another book? I even got a comment to one of my videos that there are 8 billion books. Why write another book? And you know, I think this is a topic that I want to write about that no one is talking about. There are two different big groups of books. So you have the PKM books that talk about Zettelkasten, that talk about building a second brain, that talk about uh, note-taking and all that stuff. So that's one camp. And there's another camp of books that talk about visual thinking or rather visual note-taking. And they are about sketchnoting. They teach you how to create simple figures. I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to talk about that part. But what I want to talk about is how these two worlds can merge to create something significantly more, something significantly better. And I think in today's highly distracted world, this is crucially important. So that's why I think the book is timely. I want to help move the conversation forward in terms of PKM. And I think this visual PKM is the way to engage with the world in today's fast-paced, distracted environment. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about this. I tried to convert the outline into this staircase of a table of contents. Not a good approach, so I'm not going to be pursuing this, but that was something I did. I also started to collect all sorts of topics. So this is the basis of a concept map I want to create. And I did get started on the concept map in terms of visual thinking is natural. It's our natural way of being. As children, we first drew 70% of our brain is there to process visuals. The Gutenberg press suppressed visuals, etc. So there's a bit of story there. Visual thinking is playful. Visual thinking opens a new dimension for associations, etc. So I'm really at the very beginning of creating my concept map and I'm going to include those other stuff here as well. And then if you remember last time I talked about my machinery, of how I want to tackle this based on the input I've received. So one of the things I mentioned was I'm going to research nonfiction authors and other authors and try to develop a prompt for ChatGPT. So I did that and I generated two different introductory, well, these are not chapters, these are one page introductory texts. So you can see it here. I have two approaches here in this uh, chat. And in the end, I landed on two pairs of authors. And the survey I'm sharing in the link below, you can read these two introductory 
few paragraphs and you can give me feedback which one you like more. One of them is based on Tiago Fortes' prose from Building the Second Brain and James Fry's prose from A Million Little Pieces. Fry is a very intense writer with a very intense prose, so I'm thinking that the non-fiction part of the book would go in Tiago's tone and whenever I'm sharing a personal anecdote or story or some feelings about the topic philosophy, I would be using James Frey's prose. The other option is a slightly toned down or slightly different uh, approach. So in this case, the two people that I'm using for style, one is Carl Newport from Deep Work, and the other person is Matthew Dix from Storyworthy. And Matthew is an engaging, humorous, um, but not so intense as Frey in terms of his prose. So I thought that for the anecdotes, Matthew Dix is a good choice. And I really like Carl Newport's writing. So I thought that that would be a great style for the book as well. So please read. And then let me know which version you like better and that's going to help me make a decision about where to go uh, with my prompt for the pros. And then you remember the other thing I mentioned was I wanted to create book covers and book titles. So that's the other thing that you're going to find in the survey. I actually created this whole set of Covers. The way I created this, this is all mid-journey. So in mid-journey, first of all, I created a mood board. A mood board is a styling approach in mid-journey where you can put together a set of images that you want to use as the basis for your image generation. And I chose these books because one of the recommendations I heard on YouTube was to create covers that fit the genre that you're trying to publish in. And so I thought that these books here are actually a good set of examples to look at. And from here, I went on into two directions. So direction one, you can see here, uh, infinite number of prompts and images. So I just went and tried to create images as well as one of the absolute power features. I think this is where Midjourney is just light years better than any of the alternatives is you can upload an image and you can edit it. So I uploaded this image and for example, I gave it some prompts. I generated it with different colors, with all sorts of different style settings. I did this with uh, this other book cover as well, trying to work out different styles that would look good on a book cover. Long story short, putting this all together, I was able to create a couple of book cover concepts and I would really like to hear your feedback which one grabs your attention, which one would be a book that you'd like to pick up. And also I'm sharing a couple of book title examples uh, for you to look at. So in a nutshell, this is where I am on day six. I'm going to continue to create my concept map. I'm actually now thinking that I'm going to use the concept map to create a book on a page summary for my book. And then I'm going to work backwards from the book on a page summary, flipping each of my images over, writing on their backside my notes, and then using ChatGPT with the processes I mentioned last time to generate the text for each of the chapters. I actually think that I'm going to follow this approach of asking ChatGPT to interview me because I think that that's a more interactive way to provide my input to ChatGPT and then I can use my writer's prompt 
to actually generate the text from all of that. And then I can go back to notebook LM and just make sure that based on my discussion with ChatGPT, the prose that was generated based on that, I can ensure that I have a robust references to all the materials that I'm working from. So this is where I am on day six. I'm now more hopeful, though already one week is gone from the six. So I am a bit stressed about it. I hope you enjoy this. Please don't forget to fill out the survey. And if you're interested in engaging in behind the scenes discussions, then check out the link below and join the Technovisual PKM community and join the regular discussions that we are hosting where we discuss about the book, about the process, about the scripts I'm using, etc. Thank you.